Do you think it's a little bit of lack of trust in the teammate there? Like if I go up for No, it, this is lack like of like confidence. A... This is not lack of trust in your teammate. Okay. This is not knowing whether or not you can hit this first. This is not feeling comfortable going up the wall. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another coaching video. Do you ever get the feeling that your opponents are just faster than you are or that you can't keep up with the pace of play? Well, that's exactly what we're tackling in this coaching session with Car Puncher. He's a champ two player and he's looking for ways to improve into champ three and eventually grand champ. We're gonna answer the question, how do I play faster in Rocket League? I also wanna mention that if you're interested in coaching for yourself, it will always be free. All you have to do is click the link to join my Discord in the description. With that out of the way, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Let's take a look. Ready. Remember what I said in the last video about just kind of tapping your boost for no reason? This is probably yeah. going to be a theme, but we're, we'll talk about it too, but learn how to speed flip. You want to get really good at once you decide you're going to a spot that you use a little bit of boost coupled with a diagonal flip to get to supersonic and then you let go of boost once the decision is made i'm going to follow this ball you want to essentially speed flip but you know start with a diagonal and a little bit of boost so that you're using like about 12 and one flip and you'll get to supersonic you'll waste a lot less just in general okay. it's just a whiff it's fine that you went See, like, you're flipping forward here. That's good. Same thing. This is exactly what I said right here is where you just want to hit that diagonal flip, go supersonic. I'm, I'm guessing, and we haven't seen much, I'm guessing that it's going to need a lot of that, like a lot more front flips incorporated. So we'll look out for that as we go. Okay. Probably could have done yourself a favor by picking up another small pad. Yeah. So, like, again... Rotations aside, the first thing I'm noticing is you're kind of using your boost and not using it to its highest effect. Like, okay, the decision making, and, and as you learn how to play faster, the decision making needs to be, this is the spot I want to go to, I get there fast. Sometimes, obviously, like if you're positioning for a pass, you're not going to go supersonic, but also just in general, like you want to try to avoid using your boost if you're not planning to get to supersonic speed. Okay. Yeah, this challenge too. Like, it it would have been smart to challenge here maybe if you were in comms with this teammate or if you had hit that full speed and challenged right away. That's another thing I brought up previously is that when you're the second man, the best time to challenge is right after your teammate made their life difficult. But once they've got their feet like settled again, once they have a little bit of time to plan, fake challenge this drive back. You see your teammates up on them probably not worth the challenge and you guys may just end up on their backboard your teammate went as well so you would only do yourself a service by positioning around him and trying to see whether he's going to leave or not up the field so like here after this touch happens okay the spot i would go to is like up here up the field because this guy's just not part of the play at all and after this bad touch, your teammate has this all day. He can come at this with speed like, okay, maybe he gets demoed or something. You'll be ready to just turn back to your net. But you're, you're playing defensive, which is good. But once you see your teammates got the clear hit, and look, the other guy doesn't even challenge him, you need to be ready to receive a pass. So like, go up the field. And this is part of the process where it's like, you, you hear this tip, don't overcorrect. Like, you don't want to get so far out of the play that if this guy comes in and gets a crazy challenge or something that you're completely out of it, but you're just not ready for a pass here. And in 2v2s a lot of the time, like, this pass comes midfield and you redirect it, that's harder for the defense to read and the shot's going to be faster. Um, so just in general, when you see that your teammate has a pretty clear touch, then you can start to position for the pass. So let's let's rewind for a second. Ready? Ball gets past the blue guy. Right there, that speed flip to supersonic, up to the center field. And then you can see, okay, is the pass coming? If it does, you're in position for it. If it doesn't, then you turn back and you let your teammate solo play. Okay. I question there is, I'm, if he gets demoed, I'm just rotating back again, yeah. right? 
like as I go up, I hear the boom. It's just immediately t- turn turn back and go to back. Post, yeah. Right. So for for extra clarity, all right. So for extra clarity, uh, if you're up here, your teammate from this position, and we'll look at his perspective. Like right now, this is where he's driving from. Right, ball's right here over him. He can't see you. He doesn't know where you are. He's he's basically just got to assume you're in net, so he's gonna go solo play this. But if you move up the field and this is wide open, a good teammate can start uh, to see you and pass this ball if they choose not to. And this is what I said in the first video, is you go in position for a good pass, but if in that first split second the pass doesn't come, then you can start to either rotate, pick up this mid boost and go back, or pick up the mid and go up the field if your teammate gets it past them. But um, but if we take a look at... Um, your teammate's POV right here. Take a look at that left yeah, side of the nowhere. field. He knows there's yeah. a guy to his right. He knows where the other defender is. So if he can see you, he can make a really good pass. And then you play off of the choice he makes. Um, so okay. let's, again, let's just watch this rotation one last time. You know, he hits the ball off backboard. Right then and there, you should start to assume my teammate has this ball and go up the field for a pass, just not so far out of the play that if the worst case scenario happens you're getting scored on but this should be your teammate and if you're in his line of sight he can pass that that's more on trusting him that he's yeah. got it I think, yeah right? i mean i think he played the rest of this fine like maybe pick up the small pads just to ensure you're at 100 but that's nitpicky that's like fine. That's, I, I've noticed actually over the last couple of days, I'm like, I'm missing all the boost huh. Yeah, that's something everyone can work on. No one, no one gets them perfectly. Yeah, okay. We, we talked about kickoffs just before watching the replay. So, yeah, this is the contact I wanted to look at here. This is um, not the best because what's happening, sorry, I keep missing fly. What's happening is your landing after your flip too, too close to the ball where you're kind of hitting it from underneath, you want to be landing just a little bit earlier and then hitting it directly in the center. And it's it's kind of hard to tell you without showing you, but the way you do that is a speed flip, and there's tons of training packs. Let's go like 10% uh, speed here. But you're, you're boosting kind of downwards, and that's good. But then as you're coming out of this, now you're kind of pointed upwards and boosting upwards. Practicing speed flips will help you land when you're like right here so that when you jump at the ball You're jumping directly dead center on it instead of what happens here is look at how late you land Yep, and then you're hitting it from underneath and check out this guy Like we I don't think we've even seen where this has gone if we have I'm just dumb and I forgot but like we we can tell right I'm writing something down. Yeah, just if you can give me one sure hit dead center ball on the kickoff speed flip. yeah so the idea of the speed flip is that you're going to be landing earlier and you're going to be able to jump up. Just from looking at this, I can tell he's probably going to win the kickoff. Which, it's kind of even, but he got it to his side. So that's just kind of kickoff basics is dead center of the ball and, uh, and hit it, like spin towards the side you want to get it to. Whoever gets that better contact on the dead center usually will win their kickoff. Uh, let's go back to full speed. This is the same thing, like, positionally, sure, like, you could have done something better here, which is seeing that, okay, blue has two people on the ball, orange has one person on the ball, they're coming at it with speed, probably best to just pick up a couple of pads and get in your net, but the big thing is exactly what we touched on earlier, you just hit your boost and waste it all to get back instead of speed flipping, so more flips, a lot more flips, that's just an unlucky kickoff. Same thing. You see where you landed? Yep. Yeah. Actually, we landed before that circle. Yeah. Yeah, to a degree. You have a choice here. Like, you chose to go back, so I'm fine that you grabbed this back boost. Wasting boost. Yeah. <laughs> but you're, you're moving with the pace of the play. Like, like, this is another thing. When I tell people they're not playing fast enough, they start to think, I need to be going supersonic all the time. Here, you at least, like, pace with your teammate, I would want to see a little bit more emphasis on getting yourself open for a pass, because like here you're kind of playing defense, but also not really because they could just chip the ball over you. Um, 
So you could be a little bit more towards the midfield. Decent chip. Let's see the bump again. Eh. Like at a really high level, you can start to see the game quick enough where you avoid this bump, but that doesn't really matter. Like, your teammate should probably have turned on that. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. The ball is on offense, and people are leaving to go get boost. You know, this is more of a general tip and not so much of a just you tip, but nothing annoys me more than laying up a floating ball right in front of net and my teammate is like all the way in our back corner or something so that always is fixed with just eye on the ball you know like there's a lot of visual cues on the field for where the boosts are that will help you just keep uh ball cam on uh but the the point being like i think your teammate should have stayed on this play and it's just a really good general tip to know that if you're going to leave to go get boost at a certain point, and I think that that point is champ and above, you should know where that boost is and keep your eye on the ball. Let's just keep going here. Another thing too, look, you like use your boost to recover, but then you kind of stop before you reach supersonic. It, it needs to be more decisive. You know, you need to decide, am I going to get to supersonic speed or am I going to position slowly? But you're kind of sitting in the in-between where you're just emptying your tank, and I can guarantee you later on in this replay, we're gonna find a point where you abandon for a big boost because you wasted your boost earlier, so I'm sure we'll find that. All right. Yeah, it's right here. Right there. It's like there's, there's literally um, right here. There's this pad, there's this pad, there's this pad, there's this pad, and you're in net with momentum. Like, not only is this gonna help you make the save easier, but, like, it's more effective than if you were even closer to this and grabbed this full boost. Like, you're, you're cutting off any infield passes. Like, definitely, definitely go for the small pads here. It's exactly what I was saying. Um, you know, you're gonna end up abandoning the play for a big boost, and that's bad which is right here. Like, your teammate makes the save, so it makes it a safe option here, but your initial instinct is wrong, where you're seeing danger, 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 and you're flipping towards the corner, you know? You didn't pick up any of the small pads. Like, your teammate really bailed you out here. Okay, what do you think I'm going to tell you? Just go for it. <laughs> Make the decision to go for it. <laughs> to a degree. To a degree. That's, that's a good instinct so far, but I would just say backboard defense here. Like, okay, okay, there's there's a 50-50 happening, and usually when it's a 50, that means that the players involved in the 50 are not going to be able to follow it up as easily as someone who's outside of the 50, who's coming at it with speed. So what I wanted to tell you is backboard defense. Um, I think backboard defense is going to be your best friend here. Because look, you just drive up the wall here, and the ball is flying right at you. Like this... You can catch that and dribble it. You could jump out and clear it really far. Like, you're you're totally first to it. You know, your teammate just 50 So it's kind of that same concept of the best time to challenge is right after my teammate made this guy's life difficult. And it's lobbing the ball up. And, like, it doesn't even matter where this guy's rotating. You know, after the 50, maybe he should be the one coming far post. But you as the teammate, you know, your teammate challenged. He's kind of done making his contribution on the play. So you go up the wall, and you either give this a big clear or you take control. But when you just wait in net, you're giving them time to, to reset, readjust, and, uh, and potentially shoot on you. You're trying to give your teammates space, which is good, but like taking it a step back, you have 100 boost, 50 comes out, you boost yourself up the wall, you're first to the spell. You know, you gotta, gotta start realizing that. You don't be afraid to use the walls, especially the backboard on defense. Do you think it's a little bit of lack of trust in the teammate there? Like, if I go up for No, this is lack of like confidence. A... This is not lack yeah. of trust in your teammate. Oh, okay. This is not knowing whether or not you can hit this first. This is not feeling comfortable going up the wall. Another problem is, instead of doing that, you hit the reverse button and you go back in. Like, it's the same thing where it's like, okay, you know, you, you heard the advice. You're trying to defend from kind of inside your net. You're trying to defend from far post. 
but the execution is just not correct at all. Uh, if we go back again, and from here, let's say, okay, you decide, I don't feel comfortable challenging this off the backboard, and that's fine, sometimes that's the decision that needs to be made, then, okay, instead of reversing to come into net, you're driving up to this boost, you're grabbing this one, you're grabbing this one, and you're driving inside the net this way, because what's happening is you're picking up extra boost, and now you have the momentum, you know, versus if you reverse here, and then you got to hit the gas again, you're coming to a standstill at a certain point, and you're slow to catch back up, it's going to take more boost, versus you could have 12, 24, 36 extra boost, and be moving the correct direction while defending the far post. So like, okay. ideally, this, this 50 happens, ball goes up, you should know that, okay, it's safe to play backboard defense, and then from your teammate's perspective as well, they'll probably still have ball cam on and see you going up for it, so that'll be kind of their ticket to say, all right, I can now start to get behind my teammate here. Which, like, let's watch. I, I haven't seen it yet. I'd be, I'd be uh, pretty surprised if that's... Yeah, see, he's got... Okay, he doesn't have ball cam on. <laughs> this guy's kind of chasing. Welcome to champ too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, like, teammate out of position aside, even here, he could see you driving up the wall. So my point still stands, all right? We're, yeah, yeah, we're going to... Yeah. No, it makes completely sense. Completely put aside the fact that he's misrotating here, but part of the reason is that he sees you just kind of sitting still in net. You know, he's he he's yeah. not getting the uh, he's not giving you the trust that you should be getting because you're not positioned correctly, right? You go up for this, yeah. He can cover net. You go back to the far post correctly, it's not as dangerous, and he can do whatever this was. Yeah. okay like i'm i really don't like the no motion on defense like uh, if if you're on defense you rarely want to be standing still or driving super super slow unless you're like inside your net positioning to save a shot or if you're shadowing and someone else is moving slow but like but you stop here you stop again you're still stopped you're just going back and forth you inch out and now you're out of your net with no speed like, let's take a look at this guy's perspective. If he has an open shot here, you're hardly an obstacle, right? Same for the other guy. If he was yeah. up on the play, like, this is this is not uh, good defense. Same thing, like, backboard defense here, you know? Your teammate goes, his contribution's done. Chase this ball down. Uh, there's, there's no reason to not follow this, because once you do, then from your teammate's perspective... He can go cover net if he sees you going, but he sees you retreat back to net, so now he's in this awkward 20 boost backboard defense. Like, this is this is the spot I wished you would have been. Look at, look at his execution here. You know, he jumps, he boosts, and he gets a huge clear. Now picture it if, um, if you had gone sooner, right? So, like, uh, if you go sooner, right, you're up here to challenge this, this guy's going slow, and this could have been you with more boost to clear this ball down the field. Your net would be covered by your teammate who is doing it with momentum. Um, and he's not confused cutting rotation because you're too hesitant to go up on the backboard and challenge someone. So yeah. part of it is feeling out your teammate. Is my teammate the kind of guy who is going to get behind me? Um, and if not, then you, you really have to play off of what they're doing, but then be that guy to go right after their challenge. You know, play quickly, earn the respect from your teammate, because if you hesitate in net, more likely than not, your teammate's going to start to, um, I, I don't want to say disrespect you, but not trust, like, oh, I bet my teammates got that. You know, they're going to be questioning, oh, is my teammate hesitating in net? They're not going to know. So you got to make it extra clear what your intentions are. And part of that comes with playing with confidence. So right here, same thing we talked about before too. Just a speed flip. You'll save a little bit of boost on this. And uh, you'll be supersonic speed. Like you go the supersonic speed and then you just kind of like give it up here. Like sure, now you're positioning for their touch, but more decisiveness. There too. Just like a front flip gets you there faster. 
we're definitely going to take a pause between this game and the next replay we're going to watch. I want to show you 30 seconds of one of my games just to touch on how you should be flipping around the field. All right? Yeah, no, I... This is this is decent rotation. So this is hard because the ball is going to be right in the middle of the goal. Um, I would stay more to the right here because you see the direction your teammates facing. You kind of want to go behind him. Um, same reason he can cover in front of him much better than he can cover behind him. I was wrong. Scratch that. You did exactly that. I'm stupid. Sorry. No, no, you guys was like, do I just need to take the turn a little wider? Uh, no, it's fine. Okay, your teammate robbed you. And you know why he robbed you? It's a mixture of panic and he doesn't trust you. Because you haven't demonstrated to him yet that, hey, if there's a ball that I have a good angle on, I'm going to go for it fast. I'm going to get that powerful touch I'm looking for. You haven't demonstrated that. So he thinks he needs to do it all right now. You know, like, from here, he sees you. He absolutely sees you. Or he should have known you're there. Oh, well. He should see you. He should know that that's a much better angle for you. Weird. I, I thought they were coming yeah, for no, it. No, I no. remember this exactly. And I was like, that's going to be a bang. I should get back. Yeah, this, this, is, a, and, this is a tough situation because it does look like, okay... He's going to miss. This is the kind of ball they go for. A really good player from here would know their first to it. A decent player from here would see, oh, this, this TTV kid is going to his corner and the other guy's in net, so I'm still first to this and turn right. And then the next level down is, okay, this might be a dangerous shot on net. I'm going to go back. Ideally, if you're unsure, you fake challenge this. If you don't know if the shot is coming, you drive towards it and you then drift away into a shadowing position with a fake challenge. Do you know how to fake challenge effectively? No, okay. no. I would say that's not a great strong suit of my game. I'm trying to work on it. Not very good you at play it, ones? but uh, yeah, and I'm a lovely diamond okay. one. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll talk about fake challenges too. All right, now go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is perfect. This is like how to challenge 101. Watch your teammate here. You see he's rotating back and he's grabbing this mid boost, right? So you know that he's covering where? Exactly. So go challenge this guy quickly. This KB guy, you do not want to give him time to uh, set up a shot. A shot from here is like... Pretty low level danger. A shot from here, low to medium danger. Shot from here, medium, medium high, high danger, extremely dangerous, right? The earlier you can stop a shot, the lower the danger levels are that it goes in your net. So once you see your teammate is making a play to get back on defense, you can start to pick up the pace like really, really fast to get in this guy's way and stop him from shooting. Now, sometimes when they have control like this, that's where the fake challenge will come in, where if you're approaching this guy, and at, in your approach you see, okay, he still has control, maybe as you climb up the ranks, people will start to dribble this real smoothly, or they'll set up a bounce dribble. If you feel that they still have control as you're pushing up quickly, that's when you quickly hit a boost drift turn and go back to shadow, right? Because okay. then what you're doing is you're, you're either forcing out a flick with the fake challenge and you're forcing out the flick from here, which is medium danger or low danger, and your teammates come in back so they can very easily cover that. Or, you know, if you fake challenge this guy and you're going back into a shadow position, now you're looking at, uh, at the ball from here. This KB guy, he's going to um, he's gonna have to shoot it at the far post. Because you're right here, right? He's taking the ball, and you're on the same side of the ball as him. You're covering and making sure he has to shoot it to this right post. Because if he shoots it, he can't really shoot it this way if you're on the same side of the ball as him. And guess who's covering the far post? 
do exactly so ideally as this happens once you see that your teammate is making a play for defense you come out you go quick and then you make the decision uh once you do that is it safe enough to challenge this where i either make some kind of contact on the ball or at least force out a bad shot or should i then fake challenge and try to you know bait out a flick or something like that but you don't give yourself the option at all because you're just waiting and he's bringing the ball closer and closer into the danger zone once it gets inside this ring here like you're toast you know they have so many options they have so many spots to shoot at you can't do much so much much quicker when you uh when you go to challenge this guy i just wrote go quicker <laughs> in big letters yeah so like he chooses the weak shot you know if i was coaching kd here i'd say they're giving you space take your space with it start a dribble get a flick low 50 them you know like i would i would be very upset that he just shot this um while he still had the space to bring it closer into the danger zone so you lucked out that this is a bad shot but again i can't repeat myself enough here once your teammate has demonstrated that they're going behind you that opens the door to go challenge fast stop the shot while the danger levels are low and if you can't do that or if you feel like you can't do that fake challenge because it'll either bait out a bad shot or you'll be in position to kind of force the ball to where your teammate is like you have the boost you could have gotten right in his face and this wouldn't have been on your side this would have been like on their side they would have been retreating This is not bad positioning. So like there's two there's two options here. One, if you have a lot of trust in your teammate, you can go try and bump goalie. Uh I think you played it right because clearly you and this guy aren't partied up, you know, you don't know each other's play style. So I think you made the right decision, but that just know that that option is on the table if you're ever playing with someone that you trust a lot. There's a bump on goalie there like your your teammate has a dribble. He's he's got shot on net. By the way, this is shadow defense, you know? I'm sure you know what it is, but look. Oh, I know yeah. what it is, I'm just not good at no, it. No, but, but you did it correctly here. You stayed on the same side of the ball. So, <laughs> this is exactly what you should have done in the last play, except your teammate's not back in net, right? So, so that's the difference maker. You, you know that your teammate's not going to be there in time. So here, that's where you should have just turned around instead of jumping at the ball, you know? Quick fake challenge, and then you can turn back and get back quickly, save that shot, because you know your teammate's not in net for it. The idea here is that if you know your teammate's not going to be in net, you damn well better be sure that you're going to make contact on the ball. Yeah. That's why that one went in. You can't miss a challenge if the net is empty. That's a terrible kickoff. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be mean. That's just a really bad kickoff. I can't do that kickoff from that side for whatever okay. reason. My brain just I will work on that too, yeah. but good far post rotation. Look at look at how good that save is. Like, this is perfect. You still have the momentum. And look, you start with 78. You end at 57. You used hardly 20 boost to make a save that's coming at your net quickly because you rotated at the far post, you still have that speed and you clear it. Like as you get better, you know, the clear should be more into the corner, but I, I just want to say like, that's good. And you're covering your net still like, okay, beautiful, beautiful. Watch, you make the save and the recovery. I love the way you turn here because the way you turn is that you're, you're going towards that far post, right? And, and uh, what's happening is you're ready to then turn this way and make the save on the ball from far post. So this is this is good, especially good recovery, because a lot of people will just drive out of their near post here. So well done. I think this is, uh, you're going to say backboard defense in about two seconds. Yeah? Oh my god, please. <laughs> don't be afraid of it. I remember this part of the Yeah, play. <laughs> don't be afraid of it. Like, when we go to my replay... That I'll show you, and we're obviously not going to watch the whole thing because I don't need anyone to see how many mistakes I make either. But yes, get on the backboard. It's going to be your best friend yeah. on defense. Yeah. See, your teammate is getting nervous. 
Oh, your teammate's getting nervous because he's doing something else bad, which is staying directly under the ball with ball cam on. Uh, this is awful. Never do this. This is me flaming your teammate right now. He can't see anybody in the play. But especially, he's, he's not going to see you up the wall going for this. Because if you're up the wall, then he knows, okay, teammate's got it. I'm going to go cover net. But he doesn't know that because you didn't do it. And then he jumps for it, and I would call that a terrible jump because he's just wasting his boost in the corner and taking away a ball from you that is a much better angle for you. But, like, the problem is not, oh, my teammate's being an idiot. The problem is I'm not playing confident enough to demand respect from my teammate. So that it, I, I see a huge confidence issue in, like, make the decision and go. Yeah. And the same, like, please never, ever, ever again reverse into nope, net. Not so, like, yeah. literally from here, if you decide not to go, then what you're doing, like we talked about, you come out this way, you pick up these pads, you get in net. You're, you're gaining boost, you're going to be facing forward, you're going to have momentum the whole time. And guess what, too? We didn't talk about this before. If the shot starts coming, like, once you pick this up, then you just cut it close to the near post and you can go at this with speed regardless. Because you're moving forward. But when you reverse, you yeah. you eliminate all of your options. Uh, this should be player view. Great. Like it's so slow on defense. You need you need way more momentum. This is this is where like flipping around the field and picking up those small pads, it's gonna be so essential because like You'll start to see that once you get good at like speed flipping, conserving your boost, picking up small pads, there's not going to be a whole lot of stuff that you just can't get to. You know, like as the decisions start happening faster and as you execute faster, then you're going to be able to get to a lot more stuff. Like beyond your wildest dreams, you'll be able to, to get to balls faster. So even if you're not going to touch it, get to where you're going at supersonic speed, you know, like standing still is one of the worst things you can do in Rocket League. Obviously every rule has an exception, but standing still is not good. You know, you're you're also the the best place to be standing still is inside your net at far post. That's that's my opinion. Which this is not. Yeah. No, no, no. Same thing as before. The ball's yeah. gonna fly right over you if they shoot it on net. It's an unlucky bump. Good rotation. Okay with you grabbing that boost. That makes sense. Like this. This as well. It's like, it's, it's where's the, uh, where's the, the oomph, you know? That ball's yours. You know right after the 50, that's when I'm going. Maybe you don't flip here, but you hold down that boost button, you let go for a half second, you could hit this way, way harder. You know, just this just zoom. Just zoom and go hit Watch it off the bounce and clear it the hell out of there. Watch yeah. it in there. But is it better to try to catch and carry or bang the clear, or is that gonna be situational? I'm so glad you said situational. Situational. <laughs> yeah, because I would bang this because this this other guy, he's still trying to make a play on it. And in you know, from what I'm seeing, like your teammate could probably use the boost here. I don't know if he got that one or not, but sometimes, especially in twos, I would say more so in threes, but in twos as well, sometimes a big clear is just what your team needs to kind of reset. Sure, it's always good to have control of the ball and be able to set up a play and set up a shot. Sometimes what your team needs more, and that's actually more so the case in threes, is just a big clear to get the other team on defense Everyone can collect boost, everyone can collect themselves, and then start making a play. So this, like, you can even see the decision you made was big clear. The problem is, it was more so like, just a regular clear, you know, not, not a big one. You need to bang that, it's coming off the bounce. Like, you have control, so that's good. But it's the in-between, you know, this is opening up, someone can challenge that. If you're gonna keep it close, keep it close. If you're gonna clear it, clear it really hard. But don't don't play it in between. You're lucky you got the follow up to this because someone will usually be there to stop that ball. The other guy even went. Like, let's take a look at the other guy here.
he could have gone like much better than he did or at least fake challenged or something his teammate was going for the bump on you so i would i would still just go big clear there flip around the field you recover you grab their boost just thought speed that. flip back just once just once you'll be going supersonic which you're still not <laughs> flip flip <laughs> like it's it's just you it seems like the decision of where to be is happening just a half a second behind where uh, like don't interpret that the wrong way it's just learning the game no i think it's i think it's 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 a lack of confidence mm -hmm. in the game play yeah i'm gonna show you hopefully what is a correct version of that but like even there flip to the boost you're losing nothing and most likely just saving yourself some boost in the process and to be honest with you like you know why people speed flip on kickoffs because it's faster you know like you flip backwards here that's faster you dribble this ball you see it's going for the boost you flip at that that's faster and again i can't wait to show you because it's going to be hugely hugely important for just pace of play this is also a terrible touch. Like, from this position, I think I think you just missed. You know? Like, that happens. Sure. You know, this could be a huge clear to the other corner if you just hit the ball dead on. That can be hard to do. I okay. think it's. I think you just missed. But then you try to compensate by... No, I, th I think in this play, in my head, if I'm remembering correctly, I wanted to try to come down and catch it, mm -hmm. but backboard defense, I cleared out a big clear like you just said i don't worry about that good challenge good job like here i wouldn't have turned so far back you know like i would have nitpicky wanted you to just continue on this trajectory instead of turning back but like you see the advantage here and you challenge this and the, the reason this is such a good challenge too is because your teammate is now recovering he's looking to get back kind of down the midfield so that's the situation where it's like out of the corner of your eye you can see that all right if this ball gets past me someone's going to be there for it and then you make the correct play you get a great 50 out of it and your teammate should be there ready to score this let's see where he's at see if he flipped too he's not going supersonic like ugh, makes me so mad just flip once <laughs> all right <laughs> no, 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 no. That was him, not you. Okay, I meant the method. Super slow takeoff. Like, go for it. Yeah, go for it. This, this is also just grind out free play a bit more. Like, the faster you can get up to that, the better touch you're gonna have. And like, that's just speed of play. Like, I can't really coach that. That's just play more games, and your game sense will be better. Yeah. Um, but. If for for sake of knowing what to do here, be up a little quicker for this. It's like it's like that extra millisecond is the difference between the ball going kind of off the wall like it did, or off the corner to be a center pass for your teammate. Yeah, because this is going to be right to them. Good job keeping your eye on the ball too. I like this because you look to see where you're going and then you look back at the ball. That's good. Always do that. This is good positioning as well. Your teammate, like, he lands and he wants the boost. He's kind of preventing you from going here because I guarantee you he goes to the right and away. That's exactly what we were talking about like four times by now. Is He's clearing out the play, that's your sign to go. Um, he doesn't, so you do play around him pretty nicely touch do you want boost here that was going to demo was <laughs> you're not going to catch him from that far back you do get the bump after but play the ball here like he has okay. full control you're you're not going to yeah, pick yeah. up the demo you're not going to hit the ball more likely than not you're just gonna i think i was i think i thought go boost but once he got it mm -hmm. i was like bump. yeah i mean it's it's that's hard to tell right. in the heat of the moment but but yeah you do get the bump here and that's kind of huge I would have left that for your teammate, though. It's it's about who has the better angle. Like, right here, you know, it, it again, hard to see in the moment.
but neither of the players on blue are facing the ball in any way that's threatening, and your teammate has the angle that is pointed at blue's net. So I, I get that you're like trying to make your teammate's life easy, but it's one touch too many. Look, he starts turning. Watch this. You get the bump, and he started turning there, but then you hit it kind of away from him. You get the bump, and then here, he's turning at the ball. Right here. Okay. So you could even go for another bump. You just get out of the play. But let this be your teammate's ball, because, like, worst case scenario, it gets past him. And what you're doing is your, uh, worst case scenario, ball gets past him. And you're the one who's going back on defense this way. Shadowing, making sure they have to shoot it at the far post, so you, you're covered. Best case scenario, this guy turns on this, and the ball would have been somewhere like here. Whether or not this guy hits it, he's, he's poised to hit it towards his own half. This guy's ready to hit it somewhere useful. So this could be a good threes play, but like the bump is great. It's not threatening. Just just go for another bump. See, like you totally could have got this guy. 100%. You know, let, let your teammate with the better angle touch it. And then you leave the play. <laughs> like this should have happened earlier. Because if it happened earlier, you're already on your way back in. But then you're looking at your boost here. You're not looking at the play. You're not having ball cam on. You know, like what what happens if in what happens if in this moment the ball is going center at net? You know, your teammate fifties well, both. You don't see it. You're not close. You're down. you're going for boost. You only need like yeah. ten boost to shoot the ball, and you only need like twenty boost to save the ball. You know. And, and the boost isn't even there, you know? Like, this is this is not helping the play, and you're going for something that's non-existent. That's decent far post rotation because of where your teammate's going. So often, people will do this, where, like, it's his job to go far post here. And this is a beautiful, like, teaching moment that I'm going to absolutely include in the video this when i put it out is that even when your teammates aren't rotating far post it is still helpful when you do it so you see all right this guy's gonna ball chase and he's coming down near post at this side of the field he's not being helpful whatever so then you being the smart player that you are you say all right i'm gonna stop shadowing and i'm gonna go play goalie like sure bump happens Let's, let's picture for a second that the bump doesn't happen, right? Um, and you come back and you're defending from here. Like this, so saveable. And then you have your teammate on the backboard because that's a bad touch. If he shoots this on net, you're there to save it. He shoots it back here, you're there to save it. You bump his teammate, which honestly, blind, sure, but great also because <laughs> he doesn't have anyone to pass to. Uh, but either way, when your teammate is rotating near post, very boost hungry, trying to play that backboard defense, even though it's not as helpful as them going far post, by you doing it yourself when your teammate's not, you're you're being a help to the team. So good job there. Like really good job. I'm I'm proud. Proud goose monkey. Open for the pass. Nice. Okay, so you're open for the pass here, and you see it's not coming, so you give up on it. Also, good job. And then flip towards boost. <laughs> like, I don't think I can write that down any more times on my piece. Of yep. Paper. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's good though. It's good because we're noticing the pattern. It's like the second the fifty yeah. comes out, that's when you, the decision should be made. Ready? Right there. You see where the ball's going. So now you're making a decision. And whatever that decision is, right or wrong, you got to execute on it quickly because you're not like that's one of the biggest areas where people just can't keep up. It's because they can't keep up. You know, they're not making the decisions as fast. They're not getting the supersonic as quick. They're not being in the spot that they want to be in early enough. Like there's a huge, huge emphasis on who can get to the ball first. And as you learn new mechanics, stuff like that, you get faster, you practice your double jump aerials, your speed flips, those are the kinds of things that make people play faster. The cars all go the same speed. So it really boils down to when am I making the decision and how quickly can I execute on my decision? 
So here, flip towards boost immediately. You get there quicker, you pick up the boost, and you're in a better position to make the save. Flip towards your net. Like, get back on defense at supersonic. The second that ball gets past your teammate there, quickly turn your camera towards your own net so you can see where you're going. And as you're speed flipping towards your net, you look back at the ball to then prepare for the play. But like, that's a mix of two tips right there. One is that same, get to where you're going quickly. And then the second thing is look where you're going on defense, you know, just make sure you're aware yeah. where the net is and then you can look back at the ball. But like, you're not going supersonic. You don't familiarize yourself with where the net is. So you can't play defense as effectively. Like now that you got to the spot, it's fine to slow down, but you could have been here so much sooner and you would have felt so much safer. You know, you wouldn't have felt like, oh, there's an attack coming. You know, if this guy finds a way to shoot that off the wall, you're not going to be ready because you're not that quick. Momentum and defending from inside your net. It's okay to go in your net here. I recommend it. You don't always have to, and you'll see in my games, I don't always go in net. But in this situation as well, this is dangerous. Like, get in your net because, same thing, when you defend from inside your net, and this should sound like common sense, from here, you're leaving the option open to accidentally hit it a bit to the right. From here, if you hit it a bit to the right, you're hitting it towards your corner, you know? When you defend from in your net, your momentum is helping you save the ball versus when you defend from just the baseline. Uh, that's not always the case. I'm not saying never just cut baseline and always go into your net, but in this situation in particular, you'd help yourself by going into net and getting ready to jump at this top left corner. And I also think you would say this this play is slow enough that that's viable. exactly. It's not like it's not like he's hitting some banger that's going to come by too quickly. Like it's exactly not fast enough where I have time exactly. to do that. And then yeah, that's just a whiff. <laughs> yeah, there it is. I was waiting for you to say it. I was waiting for you to say it. Like, like get get your trails, you know? Like, supersonic speed. Maybe you just need to buy a really expensive set of trails so that you, uh, so you want to use it. All right. Thanks for making it this far into the coaching session. If you're going to take anything away from it, it's that in order to play faster, you need to make your decisions quickly and you need to be able to execute on them. For Carpuncher in particular, I sent him the training packs for speed flip practice because I think it'll greatly improve his gameplay, but for anyone else who's watching, pay attention to how much of the game you're spent at supersonic speed and how much of the game you're spent below that. Again, if you made it this far, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tune in for the next one.